Oh, hello! Welcome to the Hoboan's Girlfriend Wrestling Show. My name is Hobo Tom. That is Hotel Oscar Bravo Oscar. In memory of the shield. And I have to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'm going to try to get this video up as quick as I can, so this is going to be fairly short. And for the most part, it was a fairly uninspired... Well, it really was an uninspired Raw. But we'll get to that shortly. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Also, feel free to email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. And let's talk about some WWE Raw. Raw. Romeo Alpha Whiskey. Ooh, whiskey. That got my attention. In fact, I would like to wish everyone a happy Columbus Day. At my little Columbus Day feast. You can hear my little flag in here. Because I guess that's what they used on the boat. That's pretty good. Dripping condensation all over myself. And with Raw, it was another okay show. It really was just a bunch of redos from the Super Showdown. So let's start off. We see Triple H and Shawn Michaels, a heartbreak kid, come to the ring. They really just do a quick promo and really a recap of what happened at Super Showdown. Of course, did the DX suck it? So that was kind of cool. Well, the best four way chant I ever saw was when the Hardys were still in Impact and they actually wrestled. The Young Buck in Peru. And the way the chant went, it was amazing. Delete. Too sweet. Obsolete. Suck it. So that was pretty cool. That's the best four-way chant ever. Probably the only four-way chant ever. So that's what it was. That's kind of a big recap. Let's get to, us, to our first match. Bobby Lashley versus Kevin Owens. And this was actually pretty fun and enjoyable. And I'll, I'll get to why. One, you have Leo Rush on the microphone, I think, for most of the match. Lastly, just so how much of a powerhouse he is, Kevin Owens, again, the smart ring technician. The only problem with KO is that he gets, again, this is kind of the generic wrestling problem, where wrestlers always get distracted by stuff. Focus. Um, Kevin Owens does some amazing over-the-top rope leaps. Great stuff. Bobby Lashley can catch him. Um, it kind of really ended. It was, it was a good, fun match. They, they each had the, kind of their moments. They had a good, good little back and forth going. Um, Ke Kevin Owens eventually succumbed to the vertical suplex, which still looks really impressive. But then, tried to go for a full Nelson, though. And I guess he has some new move. Kevin Owens said, eh, eh, I'm not, I know that full Nelson. And so Kevin Owens eventually, again, got the upper hand on Bobby Lashley. And being the smart ring technician, tried to go the top rope. Uh, again, distracted by Leo Rush. Lashley bumps into the ropes, crotches Kevin Owens. And... Uh, Bobby Lashley does his, like, flipping face bust body breaker thing. One, two, three, Bobby Lashley wins. But the reason this was actually a cheeseburger match. That we saw Bobby Lashley heel turn. Ooh, that could be good. Again, he has that physique where he could do that. And um, then in the back, there's a, a Finn Balor and, and Bailey interview, but it's interrupted by Leo Rush again, being the hype man for Bobby Lashley, really promoting Bobby Lashley, which is really good. Hey, I can't say much bad about that. Eliason comes out, has a songs. 
Again, a typical rundown of Australia and Chicago all in one. Then Ron, Ronda Rousey just interrupts him. And this sets up for the next match. And you can see how enthused I am. It's Ronda Rousey and the Bellas versus the Riot Squad. I mean, there were some redeeming factors in the match. I, I With all the talent, why bring back the Bellas? It might be my personal bias, folks. Again, if you have your own bias, feel free to comment me your bias. Say, you should not have any bias, Hobo Tom. Go back out there and get aluminum. It should be unbiased. But look at me. I still have my Gargano Champa shirt, my DIY shirt. Still one of the best tag teams ever. Best turn ever. Oh, Champa Bomaye. I still want to see evil Gargano. I have to have a heel of Gargano. That would complete everything. He's the redemption tale. Or could it be a heel Candice LeRae? Wanting things for her husband. And WWE, if you go with that, put one shiny quarter in my mailbox when you come to Daytona Beach, and I'll be a happy person. Or we send my copyright violation for playing. The announcer is too loud. But I, I guess I have to talk about this match now. Really, the only high point is that Liv and Brie Bella kind of brawled. <laughs> I know Liv is a professional, and it's probably over with Brie Bella and the fact that Brie Bella knocked her unconscious. But still... Liv is being a little bit on the stiff side with Brie. That's good. Again, Liv's the heel. She should be that. Uh, and Nikki Bella's coming out to be the strongest Bella? I mean, the kicks Liv to Brie were vicious. Doing the yes kicks? It was good. I mean, that was some good, that was some good action. I mean, Ruby Wright got in, had the upper hand. Until Ronda Rousey got tagged in. And then she just dropped Ruby Riot and put the arm break on Ruby Riot. Ruby Riot tapped out. But wait, it's not over yet. There was a swerve. And this whole match, even the swerve, only because you could see it coming a mile away, was just a ham sandwich. I mean, Nikki and Bella, they, they started to beat on Ronda Rousey. Why insert the Bellas? Why couldn't they pull up someone from NXT? Why couldn't they have someone move over from, from Raw to do this? I mean, really? Are the Bellas that much of a draw? Did Nikki Bella get that much money at a strip club? Oh, wait, that's just innuendo and rumor. Still, I'll have to find that video or suggestion. So it was just a ham sandwich match. And a lot of the stuff on Unraw was, was a ham sandwich. Oh, wow. One even worse, too. Well, let's get back to the wrestling. Then we had the Bailey Club of Finn Balor and Bailey versus Alicia Mahal. Again, I mean, didn't we just see this on the mix match challenge? Why? I mean, that was okay stuff. Alicia Fox just looks so long and lanky looking, though. I don't know what it is. I have to look up, I guess, her stats again. I don't I think she's on 5'6. She's a skinny looking 5'6, though. I mean, the good thing about this, Finn still remembers his New Japan roots. Really good striking. Um, again, Sneel Singh tries to get involved. Bailey takes care of him. Like, really? If Sneel's going to get involved, I mean, he's a man. He should do something dastardly to Bailey. That would give him good heel heat. 
people might actually cheer him. Or give Finn a reason to beat him up. Or give Bailey a reason to beat him up. I mean, again, it's a classic mat match ending. Um, Finn Balor wins the coup de gras. Really just a ham sandwich. Then we have a Dogs of War, um, Braun, Drew, and Dolph kind of teasing a breakup. They're all yelling at each other. Uh, Heath Slater comes in. I guess there's going to be a tournament at the Crown Jewel. And right now, in the tournament for sure, is John Cena. John Cena wins. Oh. But again, Heath Slater wanted to represent the great state of <laughs> West Virginia. He and Baron had a had a funny promo was like you're not any good. Why do you spell it out for him? Um, again, it was the best in the world World Cup. And Baron Corbin inserted himself in the match. I'll I'll just skip to it. This is a ham sandwich match. And a lot of you people might be saying, why is Hobo Tom giving us a ham sandwich with a whole bunch of jobbers whose names are the, the Belgium Waffler, the Chilean Sea Bass, the Conquistador, someone who, uh, a Russian guy in fatigues who uses a bronze claw. I mean, they just look like local Chicago talent. I mean, the only thing is the Conquistador, however, was never eliminated, though. And because he is that mass conquistador, it turned out to be Kurt Angle. And Kurt Angle actually eliminated Baron Corbin. And that's the only reason this is getting a ham sandwich. Because Kurt Angle got involved. Kurt Angle was there. He def He's one of those wrestlers that can definitely bump something up. Um, so now you know it's John Cena and Kurt Angle. I oh, don't know. For some reason, this is just going to be a glorified host show again. It's like the super showdown in Australia. Hopefully, it's nowhere near as long. I mean, well, let me qual let me explain that. I can understand why it's four hours long. Just don't have the match with the oldest people go for one hour. 20-minute matches across the board. That would be fun. You don't need The Undertaker and Kane versus uh, Triple H and H and Shawn Michaels go for an hour. No. 20 minutes. That's good. Again, when you don't have Daniel Bryan going for two, two minute long you're like, really? Again, it was a ham sandwich match. This was fun. It reintroduced Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle seemed really happy to, to be back, even though he's on vacation because the Conquistador won. <laughs> then you have kind of like the real low point. You had Nia Jax versus Ember Moon in like a match about friendly competition. I mean, Moon's a good worker. Nia Jax, again, is just really too much for her. She's too big, too strong. Ember Moon's still really good. She gives her best out there. And that was like a botched gorilla press on the outside. And it was a can of soup. Nothing's wrong with a can of soup. But it's just a soup. Fulfills nutritional requirements. That's what you have when you're. Um, I don't know. It was a count of victory. Uh, and you have Alexa Bliss, Mickey James interrupted a, a Trish Stratus promo. 
And it's really just a, a setup for the Evolution pay-per-view. And I honestly forget if that's October or November. Are they doing away with Survivor Series? That's such a staple in November. I have to ask some people. Again, this sets up for Evolution of Bliss and James versus Trish and Lita. Then there was the Shield promo. Sierra Hotel India Echo Lima Delta. Shield. Or as I say, or I spell, Hotel Oscar Bravo Oscar Space Tango Oscar Mike. Hobo. Then you had another. You had. Actually, I almost gave it a cheeseburger match until I saw the ending. And it was the Glorious Gables. Only best thing I could think of. <laughs> Glorious Bigger Money. <laughs> of Bobby Roode and Chad Gable versus The Ascension. Connor has some mic skills. I'll give him that. The Ascension all of a sudden got good somehow, too. I mean, they, they really took it. Chad Gables, I mean, Bobby Roode got the hot tag. It was a fun match. It was a ham sandwich match. And this is all just a setup for the Authors of Pain? They could have I guess done better. I mean, it wasn't bad. It wasn't horrible. It wasn't that great either. You can say ham sandwich. Something your mom makes you for lunch. Uh, Paul Heyman comes out then next. Does does a promo. Roman's part of a group. Brock's part of a group. Bron uh, I'm sorry, Braun's part of a group. Brock isn't. He, he has Paul Heyman. <laughs> And Paul Heyman is nowhere near the quality of wrestler as the others. And again, just hyping things up for Crown Jewel. And behind them, Sierra Hotel, India, Echo Lima, Delta Shield versus Dolph and Drew Braun. Why? It's putting me to sleep almost. I mean, it was a little bit better only because it, it was a lot shorter. They really condensed. An almost half hour, 40 minute long match, I think. It's really a good solid 20 minutes, the way it should have been. I mean, I do understand, you know, do you want the Aussies to come back and, and Australian dollars, I guess, are worth something. Another thing I have to work up, work, look up is how much the Australian dollar is worth. You never know. Um, again, it's not as long. Braun, again, he's just the big brute, which is good. Um, Braun does yell at the Dolphin Drew after a while, teasing some dissension in the rank. Because remember, they're not a brotherhood. They're just three guys who like to fight. Eventually, you get three guys who like to fight. They're going to fight each other. Um, Dolph can't hit the famous anymore. I mean, they still book Roman Reigns pretty strong. Um, Roman launched himself. I mean, that was amazing. I never realized he could get that much hop out of the ring. And probably because of that and, and a few other things, this was a good cheeseburger match. Very really good. You have Drew and Braun. Kind of staring at each other. Ambrose hit a swing that break out of nowhere. That was good. It, it, you know, it's, it, it is nice to see wrestlers bring up moves from their repertoire or moves that you haven't seen, like the Cesaro swing. If you don't, if you don't see that on a day to day basis, it feels like something special. Um, Drew picks up Dean and just tosses him around too. Event and actually, Drew picked up the win with the Claymore on Dean. And then Dean just walked away. So you have no idea what's going to happen. A semi-confusing, really just 
okay raw for Columbus Day. Nothing special really happened. It's just a whole bunch of rematches. And that's the one thing I'm, 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 I am getting annoyed with WWE, especially on Raw. They just do rematches all the time. I want to see something new and fresh. I want them to go back to the old days where they had the superstars versus the jobbers. And the superstars really shined. And it made them look good. And it made a superstar versus superstar feel special. Again, if you can always feel free to comment and say, I remember those days. I miss those days too, Hobo Tom. I say, Hobo Tom, you're old. I never remember that. Again, feel free to leave an email at hoboandgirlfriend at gmail.com. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Um, kind of programming those for this week. Again, I'm going to put this up as soon as I can. Then on probably Wednesday, Tuesday night, Wednesday morning-ish, I'll put up my SmackDown and Super Showdown Live. I'm, I'm still on my live stream suspension. This time, I don't even know what it's for. I, I, I think maybe I played the volume too loud. Next time, I just bust out the head, headset with earphones. I know down there somewhere, I actually had Snippets of the stream playing. Ugh. I mean, they have people that get paid a lot more than I do to do their job. And then probably Friday night will be my Lucha Underground episode. Wow, no wrestling this weekend. You will be able to see me hopefully at the November 10th NXT show here in Daytona Beach. And maybe in December.